Hi and welcome to this old house. A vertical garden is a great way to brighten up an empty stretch of siding or to make the most of limited outdoor space. To get started, check out the list of tools and materials and the cut list on this webpage. The planter needs to be fastened to studs, but those can be hard to pinpoint through siding. Use a stud finder to locate the studs on the inside of the wall, then drill into the wall just above the base cap molding to double check that you've hit something solid. You can easily cover the holes with caulk. Use a 1x2 from the materials list as a story stick and line it up with a reference point common to the exterior, like a door jam. Now, line up the story stick with the jam on the outside of the wall and use a level to transfer the marks farther up the siding. Our design calls for a series of uprights crossed with rails that hold the planter boxes. Mock up the design on the siding with painter's tape, lining up the uprights with the studs. Make any adjustments you want, then take measurements to get the lengths for the parts. First, we'll make the decorative bevels at the ends of the uprights. Set a miter saw to 45 degrees and clip one end of the 1x4. Then measure from the tip of the bevel and mark the length on the board. Make a second 45 degree cut at the mark to complete the upright. Now we designed the rails to double as French cleats so there's an easy way to hang the planters. To make them, rip a 1x6 on a 45 degree angle right down the middle. Use a combination square to find the center line and mark a diagonal cut line along its edge. To make room for the saw blade, set up the board so that it's mostly hanging off the edge of the work table. Then screw it down to hold it in place. Adjust the circular saw blade to 45 degrees and attach the blade guide. Rip down the length of the board forming two identical hanging rails. Time to build the frame. Line up the hanging rails and use some 1x4 scrap to mark where the uprights should cross them according to the layout. Mark the uprights the same way. Line up the reference marks to lay out the pieces. One at a time, lift a rail, squeeze a dab of construction adhesive onto the uprights where the rail will sit, and press the rail into place. Then fasten the rails to the uprights with deck screws in opposite corners of each intersection. Leave the center clear. Now for the lattice panels. Rest a sheet of lattice behind two uprights. Use a rafter square to mark the panel overlapping the rails. Rest the panel on some scrap and use a circular saw to cut it down to size. Place the panel and fasten it to the back of the uprights with short deck screws. You don't want to go through the face of the frame. To make the cleats for the galvanized steel planters, measure and cut a length of 1x2 slightly shorter than the planter itself. Cut a section from one of the hanging rails to the same length. Run a bead of construction adhesive along the back of the planter and sandwich the lip between the rail and the scrap of 1x2. Make sure the beveled edge of the rail is facing the planter and pointing down. Clamp the pieces together and fasten them with deck screws right through the metal. To make the hanging shelves, cut some 1x4 and 1x6 scrap to length. Glue the narrow board to the wider one, clamp them together, then fasten the two pieces with deck screws. Cut a piece of hanging rail to length, then glue it and screw it to the back of the shelf. For the stain, lightly sand the surfaces, then brush on a coat of semi-transparent stain. Let it dry, then apply a second coat and let that one dry. Now the planter mounts to the siding with PVC standoffs. That way water can pass behind it. To find the angle of the siding, butt a wood scrap against it where it meets a vertical trim piece. Trace the angle onto scrap and use the marked piece to set the blade of a miter saw to the correct angle. Clamp a stop to the sled of the saw so the standoffs will all be the same length, about three to four inches. Cut the standoffs down to length with a miter on one side and a straight cut on the other. Use a circular saw to cut two by fours to make a stand. Put the shorter boards on the longer ones and screw the pieces together with deck screws. Prop up the planter on the stands against the siding. Then at each intersection where the rails cross the uprights, use a long one quarter inch bit to bore through the planter and siding and into the studs. 
You want to make sure the holes are centered at the intersections to keep from hitting the deck screws holding the parts together. To attach the planter, drive a structural screw through the pilot hole near the top left corner. Slip a washer over the fastener and slip on a PVC standoff with a beveled edge facing the siding. Run a bead of acrylic caulk around the lip of the standoff and drive the fastener in, leaving some slack so you can attach the remaining fasteners the same way. When they're all in, go ahead and snug up all the fasteners. With the frame installed, it's time to plant. Mix together potting mix and potting soil in a 6 to 1 ratio. Fill the planters with soil, make divots for each plant, and insert them into the boxes. Now set the planters in place on the frame. Position the vines beneath the lattice panels to give them somewhere to climb. You can use plant ties to anchor any draping vines to the lattice. Make sure you water it a lot in the first few weeks after planting. Then just step back and allow the plants to grow in.